All right, now, very soon the federal government could very well know what you bought for dinner last night or whether you're having an argument with your spouse doing nasty emails hither and thither, all because of the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act of 2013, a bill that will be voted on very soon in the U.S. House of Representatives. Now joining us is our legal expert, Ann McKenna. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here tonight. This seems to me is just, just another scary step in government takeover of our lives. I mean, this is Orwellian. It certainly is. So CISPA, and you gave the full name of the act, but it's yeah. called CISPA for short. Its stated purpose is good, to stop cyber attacks. And we know, we hear about cyber hacking has become such a problem in the news. Yeah. But the problem is CISPA goes about it in a way that may be constitutionally problematic. And yeah. the goal of CISPA is information sharing between private companies and the government. The problem is that the government, if it wanted our particular information that we go online and browse, would need a warrant or some sort of court oversight to get mm -hmm. it in most ordinary circumstances. Mm -hmm. CISPA, however, is written in such a way as to promote information sharing between private companies and the government in a way that may circumvent the Fourth Amendment. So if the company provides the information, which is considered cybersecurity information or information about what's possibly a cyber threat, the company under the act would be immune from legal liability for turning that information over to the government. So there's incentive for the companies to turn the information over. I was going to say that that's <laughs> oh, no, making like, oh, them. Oh. Yeah, that's making them look for stuff then. Exactly. So and and many companies like Facebook have come out in support of CISPA because sure, wouldn't you want to be immune from liability? And yeah. the other problem, the way the act is written, is that it is encouraging companies to go out and find sources of cyber threats on other companies' security systems and computer systems and share that information with the government. So in some ways, the proponents are correct. We need greater measures to protect our cyber systems. Right, right. No question, our credit yeah. card data, all that. But this idea comes from our lawmakers in Washington and it really stuns me that it doesn't make any sense. I'm glad I sat down when I said that, <laughs> but isn't this an infringement on our Fourth Amendment rights? Well, that's, what's, that's what privacy advocates are really arguing here. And the ACLU really, many companies also have come out against this, saying, no, we don't want to turn our data over to the government. And right now, the way the act is written, it doesn't compel companies to participate. Yeah. But the incentive to participate is really strong because there's no liability once you turn that data over. This is like the Scarlet Letter all over again or the Puritans in Salem all over again. Right. And again, remember, it's a good purpose, but the proponents have perhaps crafted too strong of a bill and well, gone a little too far. You know the old saying about good intentions. All right, right. Ann McKenna, thanks so much for coming <laughs> Thank in you. and joining us. Thank you. It's always us. a pleasure, Appreciate Jeff. It.